Hi, this is John with Wallsworth Yearbooks, and this tutorial will go over the six ways that Wallsworth's online design can help you create consistency throughout your yearbook. Okay, so number one is choosing your color palette. By default, on your pages, when you click color, this is what it looks like. You will see recommended with nothing here, and then you can click all formula, which has all of the formula colors by Wallsworth. This is not the best way to choose your colors because if you went in here and you knew your color was red, well, there are a bunch of different reds in here and different people may choose different colors. So to make sure that this is consistent, what you want to do is go into the ladder and then click Manage Colors. This will allow you to create a custom style that you can apply to your entire book or to selected pages. To create the custom style, click on the plus sign. Give your style a name. Custom style will be the name I'm using for this example. Now you can drag and drop the exact colors that you will be using in your book. This easily allows every person to see these specific colors and select them. What you want to do is add them to your pages, or you could have selected all if you were going to make this the same throughout the entire book. Once they're on the selected pages, we can go back into the page editor, click Edit, and now, when we click on color, you will notice that those colors are right there under recommended. Okay, number two is selecting fonts so that they're consistent throughout the book. When you make a text box, it will automatically default to Helvetica. And when you click on this drop down menu to change your font, in the beginning, all you will have is Helvetica and Times. As you can see, I have a few more options in here, and I will show you how to add those in. So all you need to do is go back to the ladder, and now you're going to click on Manage Fonts. You'll notice here on the left that all of the Wallsworth fonts are included in the library. On the right are the selected fonts. To add additional fonts, simply drag and drop the desired font into the selection panel. You'll see that it updates and now those ones are in here. If you accidentally added one that you don't want, you can just, just click remove um, and it will go away. Once you've chosen carefully the fonts that you would like, you can save and go back to your page and now I will have the option to use all of the new fonts that I just added. Okay so that brings us to number three which has to do with character styles and character styles define the text as you set it up on the page. So when you start with a text box, okay, and you put in your text, it will automatically default to Helvetica at size 12. Well, if that's not what we wanted, if we wanted this to look different, we have the option here to make character styles. And by doing this, it will allow your pages to have consistency because everybody can choose the same character style. By default, you will have body, caption, and headline. So, for example, if you clicked headline, it will always default to that exactly. For body, I've already customized this somewhat, so this shows uh, this red color even at a different font. And you can go in and edit this and make this whatever you'd like. And then when you have a, another text box that you make, okay, and I'm just going to paste that same text in here, I can then go right back up here to character styles 
and click body, and now it defaults to the specific settings. This is the best way to create consistency amongst your text. Uh, to, another way that you can create the actual character style is by um, altering it here on the page and then uh, once you've customized it however you like it to look, um, you can go up to format, make character style, and now it will use the settings that you have here as the character style. You can go back up to that same character style and you can edit it and you can change the name of it main character style. So now everybody knows that this is the main character style that they use and then you you can change that on every single page. And that's it. <clears throat> okay, so that brings us to number four, which has to do with master pages. To get to the master pages, click on ladder and then click master pages. Now, by default, you will see A and B. Both A and B for you might show no preview available, and that's simply because you've never went into the page and clicked Save. And so let's go ahead and do that so I can show you what Master A and Master B look like. Master A, by default, is applied to every one of your pages. All that Master A has is the page number. You'll notice that in the bottom left corner and the bottom right corner there is this little formula that says LP number and RP number. That was inserted up here under edit, insert folio object. Okay, so by default this is what is on on, on master A and we don't want to change that. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to file, save, and close and because I did that, you'll now be able to see a preview of Master A. Okay, now Master B is similar in that um, it is also one of the default options, but it's not automatically select, uh, assigned to any pages. What it has is left page number, right page number, and left page topic, and right page topic. That is important if you want to include the folio on every page that has uh, something specific there. Now what that means by left page topic and right page topic is whatever is typed in to your ladder. So if we were to use master B on pages 2 and 3 it would say area design at the bottom on both of those pages. And you can edit what it says on your ladder by clicking quick edit and simply going in there and changing the text. Now let's suppose that we want to create a completely different look to our page numbers and folios. Go into Master Pages and click the plus sign to create a new one. And edit Master Page. As I mentioned before, we will want to insert the folio objects for the page number. Insert left page number, insert right page number, and typically we want these to be consistent. So um, if you click on the left page number and hold down your shift key and click on the other one, you'll now have them both selected. So you can move them and edit them together. Okay, so let's just move them kind of up here for now. And I'm going to click text and I'm going to change the size of this to 21 and I'm going to change their color to red. Okay, so now I've got this page number here that is going to be in the middle. And just to show you that you can add things to this as well, so you had some kind of design that had this box for whatever reason, you wanted this box to appear just uh, this part of it right here on every page. 
So that's going to show up along with those page numbers. And I'll show you how to do that. First, you want to go ahead and save the master page. And you can choose to apply this master page to your entire book, or you could simply go to specific pages to apply this master page. And I'm going to go ahead and click on all of these right here. And I'm just going to drag and drop. And now you'll notice that this master page is used on seven spreads. So I'm going to go and show you now what that looks like. As you can see, there's that box that I was talking about, and my page numbers, it no longer says LP number and RP number, it's the actual page number and the same font and color that we decided, and those normal page numbers are no longer there. Okay, so the fifth technique to help create consistency throughout your book is to use templates. On your spread, the templates are located up in the top left corner. Once you click on it, you will have all of the hundreds of options that are available right there. And you'll also have the custom templates. You can see here that these are uh, templates that have been designed for specific use in your book. Okay, these are not specific Wallsworth ones, these are ones that you've created. And you can simply drag and drop that template onto your page. When you do that, it automatically puts the template where it's supposed to go, and you can combine templates together as well. So let's say we wanted that little photo package, but we also wanted to add this scoreboard. When I pull that school scoreboard onto the page, it does not you know, take away anything that's already on the page, it simply adds the template, okay? So um, you want to be careful if you do try to move this anywhere that you do select all of it. That way it moves as one. And you can always group these together so that doesn't happen. Once it's grouped, now it, it, none of those individual boxes are going to move and you can always ungroup that later to go ahead and change the scores and the names and so forth. Um, so that, that's what you do if you've already created your templates. Let's pretend that we are going to work on a new page and we create something that we really, really like and Let's just say that we'll do this here. Okay, so let's say we wanted these four boxes up here. Let's go ahead and line those up real quick. Okay, if I wanted those four boxes right here on several pages for some reason. Uh, I could create that right here and then do File, Save as com Custom Template, and type in a name for it, and save it. Okay, there it is. Okay, so I can pull this into this spread or any other spread, and now you'll see I've got those four boxes again. Okay, now if I were to go into the ladder, you will notice there is a spot for the templates. It will default to the custom templates, and then you will see a preview of what those custom templates look like. If you don't see a preview, that's just like the master page. It's simply because you have not gone in there and saved it from this template area. So I highly recommend going into Edit Template Page on any of these pages where you can't see what the preview is, and then just doing file, save and close, and now we'll have a preview of exactly what that looks like. Voila, there it is. Now you can also apply these templates by simply clicking in one of your spreads. If you click on this right here 
and drag that template over here, you'll get this nice little message that says if you want to add the template to the content of the page or if you want to replace it. In most cases, you're going to add the template to the content of the spread so you don't delete what's already on your page. And then when you go back into that page, that same template is going to be there and ready for you. Okay, and the sixth method that we will cover to help create consistency in the book is by using the x, y coordinates and the width and height dimensions by typing them in or changing them here. And what I'm talking about here is if you wanted this scoreboard to be in the exact same place in all of your sports pages, what you could do is simply group this together and let's say that we wanted it to be right here. Okay, If you take note of this x and y coordinates right there, if you write that down and then uh, you go on to the next page and simply type those coordinates in, this box will go exactly where it's supposed to, right there in the corner. The same thing applies to text or to objects. If we wanted to create a shape that was right here, you could take note of the coordinates and then also take note of the size. Uh, let's say we wanted to make this, just to make it easy, 30, uh, 25, and, okay. If you typed in 25 and 14 on the next page and typed in the same X and Y coordinates, it would appear in exactly the same spot. And that will help you create consistency as well.